Rise Mzansi's top floor is the place where entrepreneurs are given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to convince multi-millionaire business moguls to invest in their ideas. I'm looking for six million investment in return for 20% of my business. Tonight, two sets of hopeful entrepreneurs go head-to-head -to, -head to be awarded venture capital to enhance and evolve themselves in their businesses. With your investment, a future queen of transportation. However, there is a catch. No matter how brilliant both entrepreneurs' ideas are, only one or none of them will be chosen. How much money? We need uh, 495000 Have you done enough homework to say that you have something different? How will you do it? <laughs> Sounds hey. impossible. So, Back in the investors is the advisor, a shrewd business guru who will help advise whether the wannabe entrepreneurs are investable. But they are getting confused when it comes to numbers. Will they rise or will they burn? Very audacious. I'd even say cheeky. Shishini asa kasa yonga wona adali msebe nze mininti kwa ye aneka lelo ekune ni kwezo mnoto. Si meme o soma shishini aba nza e millions. Uguzo mamela e nguenga zo soma shishini aba sa kasa yo. Uguzo bangati ukulisa ama shishini wabo nge mali na ngolwazi. Investors anamta njengu kiel no run. Ishi shinelika kiel no run the creative council. Yenza ima lenga nge afye billion gonyaka. The creative council equals people on the ground activating brands, talking to consumers and convincing them to buy stuff. My first entrepreneurial venture was when I was three and a half years old. I learned to cut out uh, pictures, I learned to use scissors, I cut out pictures from an old calendar and I went door to door selling these things. So entrepreneurialism or entrepreneurship is in our blood. A typical day at the office, uh, every, every day is different in this office. We're dealing with hundreds of different brands hundreds of different problems, and every day we're solving problems. So effectively, a typical day is a non-typical day. We don't have typical days, they don't exist. Every day you wake up and you think, well, what's in store for me today? And then the world happens. I think we love the fact that we never know what we're walking into. Every day we're walking into something else, and whatever we think can happen, happens. So we're masters of our own destiny. Ukumela sana la gokala mzanzu kufuma na istanga sa Global Fellowship on Social Innovation. I am a consultant in information communications technology. My main area of focus is to build economies using information communications technology. And my passion is the creation of jobs for young people. Utano nogu zumise la kukapume la kukia bwona kala mpumele lwe niyama shishinu wake. What I love about my job is the ability to ensure that young people are the ones that are doing these jobs and in that uh, process that their lives are improved uh, through the jobs that they're doing and also the skills that they learn from, from, from doing the jobs. Ukumela ushala kui board ya Youth in Action South Africa and Jengo Mkabiisi. The passion is not going to put bread on the table. It's the, it's the figures, it's the right figures that are going to put the, the bread on the table. Arba Amgeleng. Ran, welcome to Rise and the Top Floor yet again. Thank you, Aaron. Great to be here again. Mm. How's business going? Fantastic. Um, we're running, it's the end of the year. We're trying to get everything done before the close of business in December. And we're looking forward to a great end of year and a brilliant 2014. Mm. Gil, good to see you. Yeah, always great to be here. Always great to see new opportunities and exciting entrepreneurs. So hoping to throw some money at a good problem. Pumela, in course, go Sabulela, Sabulela, in course. Ungati, you know, you orange, but you millions. Tingati is tengi say orange. Kwa kwa kufanya luba ne vision, enga pezu kwa z orange zimbalo unazo. Mklambu unga unga chumba from z orange unga yenzanja ni orange juice. Unga pelela pa kwa orange. Big chungi. Mklambu ne perfume. 
at least I became an entrepreneur because of uh, when I became disabled in 1994. Changes for disabled people to be employed was zero. So I decided to start a business so that I could take my kids to school. My family will describe me as a street person. My friends will just say, hey, go around. Mr. Sefoa is our boss, but he's like a father to us. I think his speech will go very well because he's a good motivator. He'll inspire the investors very much so they can invest in our company. Chi achebe wa Ubuntu carpool ubonu munye tangu kwa transport. My idea is unique because I think that um, it brings, it'll introduce the notion of of cab sharing, of car sharing to Joburg. As a business person, I am passionate and a big picture thinker with the end goal in mind always. Working with Ms. G, the first word that comes to my mind is determined. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to pull off such a huge event such as the NZ show and um, with such a very noble vision. And I think she's very determined. Hello, Chi. Hello. Welcome to the top floor. Thank you for having me. I don't know about the top floor. Okay, this is how it's going to work. Only one of you will advance to negotiations, or none of you. So whichever one is the best, or they find interest you, or they find investable, they'll be able to get into negotiations and see if you'll get a deal. Omtembe Ukalangu. Good luck. My name is Obed Sohoa. I'm the manager owner of Cycle Check General Trading. My expansion proposal is to add laundry service into my business. Uh, we need uh, 495,000, and then uh, we can negotiate between 15 and 20 percent. We manufacturing clothing, workwear, and the school uniform. Um, I got the business mo school uniform, obviously, to school. I've got about 16 contractor schools to, to the business. I did the research. There is a need for laundry in our area. One of my staff members, was his, her finger was broken and then she spent the whole month waiting to go to theater because of they didn't have clean garments, clean work, work for, for, for patients. And then uh, look, local clinics, they normally struggle. I've been there myself. If you can go now, you'll find that there are linen lying all over. The product budget will range from between 8 and 10%. Mm -hmm. Because of uh, the, the target market is uh, government hospital and private clinics. Mm -hmm. The main thing is the buyers, they don't, don't look at the quality, they look at the price. If I say my work price is 285 and some, somebody from China selling at 65 rand, they go to 65 rand, only to come back and, and buy again. Oh, but what makes you think that you're going to get government contracts? During my research, I, I interviewed one of few of the staff members who are working for government laundries. They reserve the job for, for overtime. So government needs something to, to service the patient because of, if you keep them at the laundry, patients are suffering. So they need somebody who can service the patient in the meantime. What if you don't get the government contracts? Hmm. I think I will get. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, please. Why don't you focus on expanding what you're good at? Look, I got to find the textile because of uh, putting the focus on laundry. Mm -hmm. And there was, they will be in the same premises. I'm, I'm not looking for a new premises. They, uh, I've got enough space to accommodate all those things. Chi. Hello. 
Welcome. You've got one minute. Let's hear it. My name is Chi Achebe. I'm Nigerian born, Ivy League educated, a former Google account strategist, and a current manager for youth entrepreneurship competition at African Leadership Academy. And with your investment, a future queen of transportation in Johannesburg. How Sounds much exciting, but how much do you want? <laughs> and what are you willing to give us for it? I'd like two million rand, and I'm willing to give 10% equity. There's a major problem in Johannesburg. It's an incredible city, but there's a problem with the transportation industry. There isn't a cost-effective, comfortable, convenient way of getting from the airport to your end destination, and I plan to change that. My vision is to introduce the concept of shared riding, or what I call cab pooling. I want to introduce Ubuntu cab pool. The idea is to have a luxury 10-seater shuttle van that would be less than a cab. Each passenger would spend 150 rand per person, but they would get more than a ride. They get an experience, okay? Essentially, brand new van, air-conditioned, LCD screens where you can watch a show. There'd be a charging station for all of your devices. You can buy beverages on board. So the model, right, is to save, share, and experience. How is this there different from the current airport shuttle service? This shuttle van, the Ubuntu carpool, yeah. would essentially, carpool, would get you anywhere in Joburg. Airport link takes you anywhere you want to go. Mm. Have you done enough homework it's... to say that you have something different? Absolutely. What is it? The experience. What is the experience? Um, you'd be sharing the ride, you, uh, opportunity to network um, for you as well, and there is Network after a 12-hour business flight where you've been up all night because you haven't been able to sleep and you want us to network. How right. much money do you expect to make in the first year? Over 26 million rand. How are you planning to do that? On average, there are 3 million tourists that come to Jerbik every year. If we were to capture 5% of that market, we stand to gain 72,000 rand per day. So expanded for the year, that would be over 26 million rand. How, with three shuttles, will you bus so many people around in order to hit that 150,000 mark? <laughs> it sounds crazy, right? It sounds it, impossible. It sounds impossible. Nothing is impossible, right? It's a crazy Busing idea. 150,000 people with three shuttles in a year is literally impossible unless you put them on top of each other, on top of the roof. Oh, but how much money did you turn over the year before last year? You mentioned that last year you turned over 1.6 million. The uh, year before it was 1.35. Have you ever made money or have you always broken even? Since we, we moved to school uniform, the business is growing. My concern for you mm -hmm. is that you've got a business that you've been doing for 10 years, and admittedly, it's not making money yet, but you can grow it because you know the game, you know the business, and proof is you're already expanding. I just, I'm worried that you're gonna take your eye off that ball, put your efforts into this laundry business, which may or may not work. It's reliant on government contracts, which are hard to come by. I've been there for the past 10 years, I think my idea is perfect to, to, put, to create more jobs for unemployed. Okay. Chi. Okay. Even if you do capture 5% of the market share, how will you do it? So this estimate is based off of two trips per hour, okay? So the, the, the shuttle vans would not only do um, pickups from the airport. Each car will do two trips for, per hour? What about the traffic? The, each car would do, yes, two trips per hour. But from my house to the airport is 45 minutes. Mm. And the and traffic, where, where do you live? traffic as well. Thank you to both of you. Your thank fate will be known in a few minutes. All right, thank you very much. Nice and short. Okay, um, this is what's going to happen. Obviously, they're going to need time to deliberate and decide on which one of you they find investable and invite you to negotiations. And if you agree, you'll get a deal. Let's go. Okay. How was the experience for you in there? I think overall it was a great experience for me. Um, I love the fact that they grilled me with questions that I've considered um, and questions that I haven't considered. And so I think it's, it's an opportunity for me to actually kind of go back to the drawing board and make sure that I've, cons I've you know, considered every single possible um, 
you know, alternative. So how do you think this is going to change your life? Tremendously. I've been obsessed with this idea for almost a year now. Uh, who am I? Because of we didn't know what type of question they will ask, but any investor will just ask, uh, how do you plan to do those things? But uh, it's quite an experience. So let's say you the village. You'll never know. Because he's already what brings tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think we are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We have to bring about. Mm. Maybe about Talohani, the way we are going to be able to do it. Miss South Africa wa Maloba Joanne Strauss o shimago ja television ibile ona le dikhwebo I don't want to always work for somebody else I think it's important to have your own dreams and your own visions but also to realize that you have to have backing for it you have to do your research you have to be prepared Ukuba iskolo so fundisa ukupresenta kwa inothumela abantu ku auditions As a child I would say I was pretty much a go getter um, I wanted to participate in everything even I played soccer at high school um, and I would say I wasn't great at sport but it was a good sport so for me participation is actually key in everything in life you have to participate to actually either do well or know that it's maybe something that you're not that interested in in the long run They say opportunity dances with those already on the dance floor and I've been trying to make sure that I'm on the dance floor at all times Oh, but it's quite interesting because he has got a great business and anybody that has a business that turns over 1.6 million rand has a business. Mm -hmm. He is growing. I mean, he grew 20% year on year, mm -hmm. real growth. Mm -hmm. I actually think that he's an example of what makes South Africa run. Mm. This is your typical entrepreneur who will be the reason for South Africa growing in the future because mm -hmm. they're creating employment opportunities, mm -hmm. they're taking risks. Mm -hmm. My concern is it'll take his eye off the ball from the big prize. Why are you suggesting that he must focus on his current core business and not diversify? He mentioned as if there's a, a symbiotic relationship yeah. between the, the, the clothing that is and the workwear that is being made and the, the, the scarcity of places where even this clothing can yes. be washed. The business that he's currently in is all about efficiencies. Yeah. It's about sweating what you're doing and making sure that you're as efficient as possible because you are up against the Chinese. I'm not mm -hmm. sure that I agree. The Chinese clothing market is sinking a lot of South mm -hmm. Africa's hard-working uh, uh, CMT industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a logical expansion where he's not competing with the Chinese. Yes. So if he can it's just, a service. It's just a mm -hmm. service. So if mm -hmm. he can supply and offer a secondary laundry service mm -hmm. to increase his margins, because there he's not competing, mm -hmm. or certainly he's not competing with the Chinese, mm -hmm. I think he may be, in, may be able to go in and offer a, a holistic contract. Mm -hmm. So for example, I will sell you the linen, and I'll also keep your linen clean for a year. Mm, okay. Let's spend some time talking about Ubuntu cab pool. Here's a model that I've seen a million times. I mean, mm -hmm. I use the model. Mm -hmm. People are looking for convenience. Mm -hmm. They're looking for, at price. They want to get there as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. she's, she's got a, a great way of presenting, but one of the lessons that entrepreneurs must learn is you've got to start with something that's unique. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to differentiate yourself in some way, especially in an environment that's fairly cluttered mm -hmm. and highly regulated. On top of it, very audacious. This is the moment. Let me remind you, only one of you, they might find investable. Hi guys, welcome back. How are you feeling? Thank you. Nervous. Robert, nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Chi? Excited but anxious. The good news is, we have made a decision. On the left, we have Ubuntu Capital. As investors, we believed that not enough homework was done and that the numbers never made sense. That maybe there is a good opportunity here, but the question is, are these numbers really justified by fact? Abit, you've been running your business for 10 years, and even though you say you've made no profit, you've survived on it. You know your game, and you want to diversify. Good entrepreneurs understand the importance of diversification, but, you want to get a machine that is reliant on a government contract, hard to secure, and 
you're only offering us 8 to 10% return on our investment year on year, it means it will take a long time for us to see our money back. That concerns us. The other concern, of course, is that you may not actually be able to do both businesses at the same time, in which case one of those balls may be dropped at our expense. And what we have decided today is that we are going to negotiate with neither of you. We believe that not enough homework was done with your numbers. Albert, we believe that your idea is, although, although a great idea and part of an existing business, doesn't offer enough return for investors. So one bit of advice that I am going to give you, and I think that this is probably the best advice that you're going to get. You don't need to sell equity in your business. You can own 100% of your business, and you can approach a company that does asset financing to help you buy the machine. And you can repay them every month, monthly installments. That way you get to keep 100% of your business and to own the laundry machine. As far as you're concerned, Chi, I learned a great Latin term from our colleague here, Pumela. It's tabula rasa, which basically means <laughs> clean slate. <Wait. laughs> Start from the beginning. You've got the looks, you've got the passion, you've got the education. Think again, start from scratch. I have to say the term, tabula rasa. That's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, none of you, uh, the investors, found investable, so you will not be getting into negotiations for a deal. I have to wish you best of luck, both of you, and you may leave the 22nd floor. Thank you. Thank you. Kisipetsawo <laughs> for Batu, refer to Lema Pula Batu, Rabwe. I feel that um, things happened as they should. Everything happens for a reason. I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed um, because uh, I did have um, more specific answers or a breakdown of some of their questions, but I felt that it went so quickly, they, they, they kind of spit out questions one after the other. I didn't really have a chance to respond in detail. I think um, the future is still very bright for me. Uh, moving forward, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is um, researching, um, finding the right partners, and pouring in all the passion and obsession that I have around this project and this idea, and making it work, and it will. I didn't get the deal, but then uh, my future still stands bright. The co I will continue to run the, the current business and then uh, try to get an investor who can invest into the a new proposal. But then it will work. Maybe the investors they did not buy into our ideas for their own reasons, but then from my point of view, it's a good idea. Before the break, business because investable. Somewhere else, but K business is shake a Kukona Baby Nabas and Gan and Goki about in the artist, a trailer and Tohana, Yetlash and Jess, Tela in Lebe, Senin Colabasins and Dunin, I'm Shambe, Sakas Basingen, Queen Otto, and then Classic Vumela and Gamana Nike, Omnia Wabo, was a Fumana Etil or Kaye Wabini, Abazu Fumana, before the Babizake, Masbon Babatin and Sindonina. Website Richard Hammond Dark Carnival. Ela chola kwa barata kodi toyjer dibicha horikiri pop culture memorabilia. The Dark Carnival is your one-stop geek shop. We specialize in geek and pop culture merchandise from all over the world, relating to movies such as Star Wars, The Avengers, comic book uh, merchandise. We eat, breathe, sleep the Dark Carnival. We literally get out of bed and, wa and walk into work. We go to sleep with work on our minds constantly.
Molikani wa gagwe gwebong o motse bakudu ibile o motshepile. He um you know when things aren't going well he's kind of you know the person that's like okay get up we're going to do this it's going to be amazing and I'm like Ugh. but um he gets me going he's he's my rock. Zahir David wa go tsa go fly world chariots o dira dintlanya tsa go gatlisha kudu. About 14 years ago, I was retrenched from my former workplace. I always had a passion for lowrider cars and bicycles. Uh, tapped into my own creativity to, to create work for myself and put bread on the table. That's the, that was actually the start of flywheel casting. People would best describe me as the bicycle man. I mean, everybody knows me for cruising, lowrider bikes and building these amazing creations. And they know I'm very spontaneous and I like blowing people's minds, so I, I don't like sticking to the norm. I like doing things differently at all times, whether it's in my personal capacity or with my business. Gentlemen, welcome to the top floor. Sahir, Richard. This is a very important moment. Hopefully one of you will get a deal. Only one of you will get a deal or none of you. Umtembi Utkalanguk. Good luck. Hi, my name is Richard Harmon and I'm the co-owner of The Dark Carnival, your one-stop geek shop. I'm here today to seek funding of 2 million rand for 15% equity in order to grow our business. You're looking at about 250,000 rand uh, just to start up. We're looking at about 500,000 rand per store if I, if I set it up in some of the major centers. We are looking to expand our, our uh, business into retail outlets around in the major, major centers around South Africa because we found that our customers are still a bit wary about purchasing online and want to physically interact with our product. In order for us to do this, we need to increase our stock holding as well. Currently, the, we are only online with our only retail presence being at shows such as the Rage Expo and our very own Geek Fest, which we, run, which we started this year. Well, the two million rand has been broken down to open up to stock two shops um, and build stock and also go into our marketing to expand. My background, I started in hospitality, moved into sales and then decided a couple of years ago that uh, it's time to go on my own. We've got a couple of competitors. One is called Outer Limits, another one is called Cosmic Comics. Uh, we keep stock so that our clients don't have to wait for their products. They don't have to wait two, three, six weeks for stuff to come in from the States on special order. Richard, what was your turnover last year? Uh, last year was 250,000. You turned over 250,000? Yeah. yeah. How, how long have you been running? Three years. What did you turn over the year before? Uh, that, that was the first year. The first two years were run together. How long have you been in existence? Two and a half two. years. Okay. And how much profit did you make out of that 250? Not much. It, it was still, it was all, uh, all went back into the business. So you've never done retail before. And the reason why I ask is because you're asking for 2 million rand and you want to open retail stores. Yes. And stock holdings. Yes. So what's the ratio of 2 million rand? What's it going to go to? It's going to go to opening up two stores, which we plan on doing in, in uh, the major centers. How big is the store? 50 squares. 50 squares is going to cost you 500,000 rand yes, to set up? Yes, to get up and equip and run, yes. And, okay, and listen, I like the toys, yeah. and you know, it's cool, mm. but do these things sell? Yes, they do. In South Africa? In South Africa, and it's a growing <laughs> who do, market. Who do you sell it to? Everyone, any type of geek. Anyone who's got a passion for Star Wars, passion for Big Bang Theory, comic books, clothing, we sell. Um, we are solely online, they have physical stores, and we found that we still need to have a physical store, right? And so what's your value proposition? I've got, an, I've got an interesting question for you. How did you get to a valuation of four million rand on your business? You asked for two million rand for 50%. Why, why two million? Why not seven million? Why not five million? How did you get to this number? We calculated it on the, the basis that just to start off with the, two, with the two stores, that's what we would require. We want to expand it out to the other major, other centers in Southern Africa, as well as possibly franchise. We also run uh, a festival that we, uh, an event. That the we Geek Fest. Geek Fest, yes. Where, where do you run it? We ran it at the Goldfields Kennel Club this year, and we had two and a half thousand people through our doors on, the, on our first event. Did you make money? Yes. How much money? We turned over almost over 100,000 Rand on the day. So you only turned over 150,000 Rand on toys last year? On, the, on the day. On this day, yeah. No, 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 you said 250,000 250. was your turnover. That means 100,000 of your 250 no, no, was on this. No, this year. Geek Fest was this year. Hold on, I'm confused. Yeah. You told us that your turnover, oh, Geekfest is this yes, financial Geekfest year? Yes, Geekfest was this year. Okay, we got year. it. Would you invest in Richard's business? Oh, 
putting me on the spot. Um, if I gave you my checkbook, would you write him a check? I would invest in my own business. Good case. Good let's, hear, let's, hear your, let's hear your business. My name is Ayer David, owner, founder and owner of Flywheel Custom Carriage. We design and manufacture custom low riders. Um, I'm looking for six million investment in return for 20% of my business. I would like to set up a full manufacturing plant, putting this particular bicycle into production as well as other variety of different models and bicycles. We're very small now at the moment as I'm only doing full customs now at the moment and hence why I actually want to go into production because the demand is so great. Last year, to be honest with you, I just quit my day job last year, mid-November, so I've been doing it informally for about 14 years. Um, and last year, I made about 150000 With today's economy, I mean, everybody's looking at green initiatives, reducing our carbon footprint, and everybody's definitely looking at alternative means of transport. And hence why this particular bike was designed, to give you that custom commuter feel. So a lot of more people are commuting by bicycles. Sorry. Uh, entry level model you're looking at about six, six and a half thousand. Um, a more high end model you're looking at about sixteen and a half thousand. I think at the end of the day, I mean, we, we, we all try to reduce our carbon footprint, and there's lots of different ways. Um, for instance, I mean, just manufacturing some of these things, I take into consideration recycling a lot of the parts and components as well. So I distribute that to, to underprivileged community, fixing up their bikes. So that part of my business is green recycling some of the parts and components, as well as uh, um, I've got a, a furniture range as well, built out of bicycle parts and components. How many bikes did you make last year? Um, off the top of my head, about 35, 40. I'm not a cyclist. I yeah. think, Grant, you, you're a bit of a cyclist, a cyclist. aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you, may, you may know this question, the answer to this, but what would make this unique? To, as, a, as an experience? I have no idea. I'll ask the manufacturer. The hair. I think firstly is the styling of the bike um, and it gives the consumer an opportunity for self-expression. So you can swap and change parts and components. I've got a wide variety of different wheels, different style frames as well, different color schemes, uh, all the... How much do they go for? Again, depending on the styling of the bike. We're talking custom now, but if we're going into um, production, we're looking at 6,000 for the cheapest one. And apart from being green, what else do the bikes offer? It's not green, it's brown. No, no, no. They're saying the green <laughs> yes. economy. We're just teasing. Good question. Okay, the brown green. What's green about it? Sorry? I mean, what's green about it? Cycling. No. Yeah, but we, we, we're going to give you 6 million rand. You valued your business as, at 30 million rand, effectively. Yeah, yeah. Because you want to sell 20% for 6 million. Yes. Um, I, I looked at a turnover of within two and a half years. Um, the after a five year period from today, you're looking at about, say, 25 to 30 um, million rand return. What is it that investors would get in terms of their return on their investment in your business now? You get uh, get your hands on the premium uh, geek brand in South, in South Africa. Two years, we've built up 9,500 followers on our Facebook page. Okay, I'll, I'll, you can see their figures, guys. They've yes, got figures like yes, this now. Yes, in, in terms, terms of, of yes, so ten, talk about profit margins. That's the language they want to All right, hear. the profit margin at the moment, we, we work on between 30 and 40 percent. Those are a lot of the imported stuff. Uh, we can't go higher because uh, we have to keep within the market range. Um, but we do have other, other products that we do have high margins on. Richard, See, if I order something from your website, yes. who, who delivers the product? We use a courier service. Use a courier, courier service. service to your door. You see, the thing is for you is your overheads should be fairly low now. Yes. What is the rent going to cost you per month? You know? 40,000 Rand a month for 50 40, squares. 40,000 Rand yes. a month. So how much more stock are you going to have to sell every month just to cover your We're rent? We're going to have to look at selling at least uh, 60,000 Rand, 60, 70,000 Rand. But your stock. margin's 30 or 40%. Yeah, no. So you're going to have to, you're going to, have to sell 100 Rand. So what you're exactly. saying is sorry, his I'm numbers aren't making I'm, sense here. Oh, I'm getting a bit confused with my numbers. Sorry, I apologize. It's about 250,000 Rand turnover I'd have to make a month to cover my expenses. How many of these bikes do you think you can sell? Just give me a straight answer. Probably about 80, 100 a month. 100 bikes a month? Yes. Wow. I've just recently returned from Germany and I've been dealing with some of the guys in, 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 in Germany and Amsterdam and the, U, and the US as well. So there's potential. I've actually got an order for 10 frames um, for, for, for Canada. So I'm not just looking locally, I'm looking internationally as well. You think that if you've got all this money from us and everything goes well, you could sell 1,200 bucks a year. 
1,200 bucks a year. I think I could pull that off, yes. Give or take. Yeah. I have a very important question. Mm. How much is that Yoda? And this can Yoda, I buy it from you? This Yoda is about 350 rand. <laughs> we'll talk after the show. Okay. <laughs> and it would be interesting to hear what Aaron has to say. I think for a change now, we need to hear what you I, I, I'll tell you something. <laughs> uh, when I was a child, I never had an opportunity to play with toys. So every time I see toys, I get excited because the little child inside me jumps out. So I would invest in Richard's business. <laughs> just how about, how about, are you talking Aaron, from the heart or from the mind? This is a are, business show. Are you show. talking from We're the heart or from business. the mind, Aaron? This is a business show. <laughs> 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 All right, well, it looks like our investors have got enough information. We're going to give them a little bit of time to deliberate to see if one of you or none of you is investable. Gentlemen, let's go. Gentlemen, it's never easy on the top floor. Sure. I could see you were struggling with those hard questions. Let me start with you, Richard. How do you think it went? Well, I, I can't say. I really can't. I don't know which way to, they, they're going. Mm. Yeah. Let's say they decide that we're going to take you into negotiations mm. and even offer you a deal. Mm. How is this going to change your life? Uh, exponentially. It will set the, our next stage of our business into motion. So, how did it go? We went okay. Um, felt a bit pleased with the numbers. Um, very hard calculating on, on camera. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of had everything figured, but you know how it is. Uh, yeah. And if they give you a deal, how is it going to change your life? Oh, dream come true. Eh? Um, Definitely taking me to the next level. I've been dreaming about this day for a very long time, and um, I think it's it's time. If I don't get it here, I'm, it's definitely my time. Anytime soon. Yeah. It seems as if these two contestants are very passionate about their product, but they are getting confused when it comes to numbers. What we do know is that custom-made bikes in Europe and in the States is a massive growing market. Mm. But we also know that custom-made bikes are big there because cycling to work and cycling to beat traffic mm -hmm. and cycling as a commuter mode of transport is very, very big in those places. Mm -hmm. That bike looks fantastic. Mm. He seems to know what he's doing mm. and he seems to be very passionate. Mm. But mm. he doesn't know his numbers. Mm. He has a guy who's been doing this part-time. For 12 years now, yeah. and now he wants to go into it full-time, I would maybe consider backing him. I'm tempted to maybe give him a second shot. Mm -hmm but we'll have to think about it some more. Mm, 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 then, mm. then we've got Richard, the geek. Mm. Do you think he'd be okay with us calling him a geek? Yeah, I think he's a self-admitted geek, geek, yeah. Are you, are you a geek? No, definitely not. But yeah. I know that you're a geek undercover. I, I, I am. <laughs> Which I of am. that? Oh, 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 I need the, the Yoda, wand, I need the Yoda, Yoda toy, Yoda, but that, that, doesn't, already appeals to you. that doesn't mean I want the business. It means I want the toy. The Let's talk about the business. Mm. Um, I love the business. Mm. I love the concept and the idea behind the business. Mm. The one part that I don't like is retail. I feel the same way. Mm. The game of retail is complex. It requires that you first pay a landlord before you see a cent. Mm. You have to run staff. You have to have huge stock holdings. You have to make it look pretty. I don't like the retail angle. Everyone's moving away from retail and everyone's moving into online retail. I was excited when he said online. I got all excited and then I just felt this I almost heard this sound go, wah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Like, what? You want to go into retail? You want to go back into the 80s? No, I don't know. Run. But I do like the idea of the business. I really like the Geek Fest because I think that's a movement and that you, you become your own marketing platform when you've got all the geeks coming to you and you own the Geek Fest. Yeah. He's got a very small niche. Can he grow it? And are we willing to take a risk on it? On so final question. Since your, your, your main area of concern is about them going directly into retail, what if Richard change his model and still did the same like supplied the same products but maybe um, ask for space in an already existing retail stock that's now a final question think, now you're thinking like an investor these are two very cool uh, concepts and you guys are very funky except for the geek can we just <laughs> can we just agree that no matter what happens on the show tonight you leave the toys and the bikes behind. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, I will keep the bike. I have, I have yeah, feeding, feed 400 rand over here for that Yoda toy. I'll make you a deal. I'll give this to you for, and you can keep your money. <laughs> How's that? Can, okay. I, can I tell you? He can I tell you her. something? No, no, no. Hold on. I Let's insist, deliberate first. Let's I insist deliberate. on paying. I insist on paying because there is no such thing as a free lunch. Mm -hmm. So here we go. And I'll make you an even better deal. I'll take half. 
and give you half back. At least you're contributing something. Okay, I'll take the other half. Okay, that's up, to you. that's up to you. Okay, gentlemen, let's go. Let's go. I have to clarify to our viewers that this is by no chance bribery. <laughs> so whatever decision is going to be made today, this has got nothing to do with it. It has no influence at all. Let's start with our friend at Flower Bucks. Zahir, we love the concept. We know that in Europe and in the States, this is flying. Yeah. In South Africa, we haven't cracked that market. There may be an opportunity to create the market in South Africa, and there may be an opportunity to export. But you don't know your numbers. And when you get to a TV show, when you're talking to investors, and you don't know your numbers, it's the biggest mistake you can make. It makes us feel uncomfortable. Richard, on your side, we like the idea of the niche market of geeks. You understand your market because you are the market. But on top of that, we like the Geek Festival. Mm. We think that's a platform that you can grow and nurture globally. These type of festivals are huge. Our concern is, why would you possibly want to get into retail? Mm. Online is where the game is at. So that's where our concern lies with you. You also didn't know your numbers. I'm worried, you didn't, do, you didn't do the right homework with your numbers. You're asking for two million rand for 50% of your business. I think it's gonna cost you a whole lot more to build a store. So, so mm. that's where we're at right now. <laughs> we need to make a decision. Only one of you can stay. And with that person, we may negotiate a final deal. <laughs> we need to make a decision. Only one of you can stay, and with that person, we may negotiate a final deal. Our decision is, is that Richard, you stay. Sure. Zahir, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Now that I didn't get the deal, I mean, it's not the end of the world, so I'll be definitely searching some other places. I think the nerves got the better of me, but the numbers is obviously important. So, here's the deal. You, you need money. You need a lot of money to make this happen. We want to buy in to you. We want to buy into Richard and his concept. Okay. We're willing to pay a certain amount for that. It's not a lot. Put it on the table. Something's just happened, Aaron. What happened? <laughs> what happened is that Ron has changed the number that we agreed on, and he wants me to consider it. What do you mean? There's another negotiation going on. So there's another negotiation. So this, this, is, this yeah. is not what we agreed, yeah. Ron. <laughs> and obviously he's, he's changed his mind for some reason. Can, can you give us... Let me yes. suggest. Is it possible that he whispers to you why he yes. changed the number? Yeah. Obviously Please. there's something else to pick yeah. up, yeah. and then obviously we can... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's the quick one. Okay. okay, so we've agreed. Mm. We want one third of your business. We want 33% of your business. Mm -hmm. We don't want over 50% because we don't want to control your business. We don't want under 25% because we want it to make sense for us to invest our time and effort in your business. And if we only own 5% of your business, we're not gonna spend much time and effort mm. in your business. And we wanna spend time and effort, why? Because we believe in what you do and we believe in the Geek Fest. One of our businesses focuses on fests and events. And we believe that we can make this really, really big. We're gonna, we've got another company that does social media and sells a lot of Facebook media. Mm. They'll be able to optimize us. So we're not just coming with cash, we're coming with expertise. But the cash part for 33% that we are willing to give you is 200,000 Rand of which 100,000 must be for stock at least. The other 100,000 you can have, put in your pocket and enjoy the moment because the rest of it will be hard work. Total of 200,000 Rand for 33% of the business and our mentorship, expertise and skills. I'm thinking I'd have to, I actually have to talk to my partner about this because we were working on the, getting the, 
on the 15%. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic offer. Phone her. Phone a friend. Phone her on Phone the Yes. How's it? Uh, I'm in the negotiations with them. <laughs> um, you're live, huh? Just hold on a second. What's your name? Kasha. Hmm? Kasha. Hi, Kasha. You're speaking to one of the investors. My name is Gil. Ran is the other investor. Hi, Kasha. How are you? Fine. I can't believe that you guys have on me. So, Kasha, let's, let me give you the long and the short of it. The long and the short of it is yeah. that we love the idea of a geek fest. We love the idea of a one-stop geek shop. We hate the idea of we hate the idea of retail. We don't want to open shops. No. We need to know. Two hundred thousand rand, hundred thousand rand of that goes into stock for thirty-three percent. Thirty-three percent, and then the sky's the limit. We will be partners and we'll work on it together. But we need a decision from you. And if she says yes, Richard, are you in? Yes. Richard is in. Are you in? Thank you. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Ito inde kumbi sika yego kabla yego kwa lao fumene yeshem iti libgo sofu msebi zako omse kuto yake endo na kumbi ndo bana omse bizi kwa sebi zile kanzi ma uri chete hapa ufumene iti although it's not the deal abe we fell into money two million abe niga fifty fifty percent but you kwe chonga saka kana yego two hundred thousand rands and then strela ukwe thirty three percent kupela from there baza ukulisa ishishin like remember ndo bana it's not just about baba mnige zimali kuko na ulaz olunzul oluninze abe lizi sayo to to help uri chete bizi zake izo kula and the time baba na wapi kaya utati in notes so cool is a lack of issues in the pen in a paper call abu gala erasm zanzi apa good top floor good night being the top geek i feel full of mixed emotions i, I i'm still this it still needs to sink in i came in here not expecting to get anything and now i came out on top with a business partner of, of two guys from the creative council which i am aware of the company and aware of the achievements i just i still can't believe it when I leave here, the first thing I'm going to do is go and celebrate, have a nice glass of whiskey, <laughs> calm the nerves, and then start focusing on moving forward.